car. Oh, uh, so thirty-year-old Hyundai. Please. Gotcha. Okay, so is, do I love my children? Let's assume yes. how about a safety features and stuff like that. Okay, so you got the safety issue, love of children. You got two things there. How about what do I do for business? Did you find that out? You're gonna to have to create something. You think I make an impression on my client? Let's assume I'm a businessman of some sort. You think I make an impression drive taking clients around in a 30 year old beat up Hyundai? A no. bad impression. Bad. Okay, so do you, do, do you need to find out what I do for a living? Correct. Okay, the whole point of this role play is to create a need, create and exacerbate needs. Sometimes they don't give you a need. They don't know they have a need, do they? No. Okay, sometimes you have to create. Why do they, why do they always have popcorn cooking in the movie theater lobby? So you can smell it and be hungry and want to buy some. What happened? Yeah. Did you walk in that movie theater and say, I can't wait to spend $20 on a bucket of, of really cholesterol filled garbage popcorn? No, no, but your nose will tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> so did they create the need with that smell? Yeah. Yes. Olfactory senses. Thank you, nurse. Absolutely. This is guts 2.0, guys. A little bit, uh, a little bit more. We're getting a little deep here. Suggestion and stuff. Okay. So Jimmy, go back into this, and then we'll switch to Sean. You've got to create one more need. I need three to six needs and greeds before you sell me that $160,000 Porsche. Yeah, Claude, um, you know, <laughs> you mentioned that, what, five kids? You know, for your safety, it sounds like you really need, uh, uh, it sounds like you need a bigger car, you know, more space. What you think? I don't know. You know, it's real work. It's a little tight sometimes. Two, three kids got to share one seatbelt. You know how it is. I'd strap mm. them to the roof if they'd let me. So, uh, <laughs> I'm stuck on that one. Go ahead, Sean. Okay, okay got to go, Claude. No, I want you to go deep and make it emotional. Claude, you sound to me like a good father. I, five kids, God, man, that's a good man. And you probably work real hard every day. I bet you love your children to death, right? When you come home, do they crawl? They jump all over you? Yes, okay. Oh, yeah, how much do you, you know, how much do you love that, right? I love that a lot. You see, strike me as a man who loves his family. I like oh. that. I'm, I'm old school, man. I like, I like families. I like big families. Of course, of course. Okay. Well, you know, it's, strike, it's kind of interesting to me that you're with a guy who loves his family as much that you're not, you're not concerned about them. God forbid you get in an accident uh, that you don't have the safety features in an old car like that. You don't have airbags. You don't have enough seat belts. Um, yes. Maybe I shouldn't have brought this up. I'm sorry. You know, I appreciate you for even bringing that up because I, yeah, I'm actually thinking concern. about that. You know, yeah, that's what I think it, about all the time. It's hard. We got, you know, you're a busy guy. Speaking of busy, what do you do for a living, sir? You, you know, I, I purchase properties for a living, you know. Oh, let me ask you something. What do you think goes on people's minds? What do you think goes on in their mind when you drive up in a 30 year old car? What does that say about you as a successful businessman? I know it sounds a little materialistic and pretentious here. But what, what do you think goes in people's mind when they see in that old car? Well, you know, they actually look at me as I don't have any money. I'm not really in business. Do you think that hurts your sales? That's the reason why I'm here. You think, let me ask you something. You're in, you're in real estate. Do you think you could make a lot more money? If, if you were driving a car, what do you think they'd say about you if you drove up in this beautiful Porsche? This Cayenne. Man, this guy is successful. He's doing a good job. He must be selling a lot of houses. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you know what? I think I, I think I should I do business with him. You know what? Let me ask you something. It's okay to say no to me. I'd love to put you in this car, show you how you would sub I can tell you right now, I'll guarantee it. And you can come back and yell at me if you want. I'll tell you right now, in the next 30 days, you could substantially increase your sales by driving a car like this because you're making a statement to the world that you're a successful businessman who don't, won't who won't accept mediocrity nothing wrong with that 30 year old hyundai but i'll tell you two things that bother me it's not a safe car for five kids and i think it's hurting your income suppose you could substantially increase your income 10 to 25 percent in the next 30 to 90 days and have a safe car with all the safety features for your children then i could meet it within your budget how would you feel about that, sir? I 
I think you hit the spot. Which means? I feel good about that. I feel good too, sir. I've made a decision. I'm going to put you in this car. I'm going to break every rule. I'm going to beat up my sales manager. I'm going to find a way to put this you in this car today and, and protect your family and show you how to make a lot more money so that this is not only in terms of safety and income for your family, but it's a good investment for you also. Does that make sense? It, ma it makes a lot of sense for me. Where should we it go from here? And it's okay to say no to me. I don't want you to do anything you're not comfortable with, but between protecting your family and, and getting out of that old car with no safety features and, make, and showing your clients how successful you are, you have so much self-esteem that you have so much confidence you're gonna drive a car that costs more than something. Let's do it, Claude, let's do it. You sold me, let's do it, Claude. I don't wanna sell you, to do sir. It I, now. Want, I don't wanna sell you, sir, I just wanna protect you. Cause I'm, I'm just thinking right now how things would be. Sign, me. Sign here, sir, we'll make it work. I'll make it work. That's it? Appreciate your trust, thank you. That's all I need to do is sign right there. That's it. Sign right here. Sign right here. And I'll, <laughs> and I'll do, I'll take care of the rest. You're in good hands now, sir. I'm like the all state guy. <laughs> that was on good. jeopardy. That was on jeopardy two nights ago. What it, it was at a lunch meeting and one of the salesmen said, you're in good hands. And one of the guys says, that's brilliant. And that was how all state said we're the good hands. Pe I think it's all state. Am I right? There's a prudential. Yeah, I think so. Okay, you, it was at a lunch meeting or something. One of the salesmen came up with that. That was good. Yeah, that was, good. That that was a good you. role play. I have to go, guys. What? Give me, give me a takeaway before we go. What did you learn from that role play? That you was a great create, role play, Jimmy. You created a freaking pain point. Uh, it was a good role play. You created. I like that word. You got to find a need. Okay, create a need or exacerbate a need. Sometimes they don't give it to you, do they? No. They're like, uh, did you ever get the guy? Uh-huh, uh-huh, mm-hmm, yep, yep, mm-hmm. He won't talk. Monosyllabic, is that the word? Monosyllabic answers? You, you get the guy who won't talk. You gotta pull it, it's like pulling teeth without Novocaine. You can't get a word out of him. So you have to create or exacerbate the needs. Sir, you got a car, you gotta be creative. Sales is about being, sales is dangerous. You've gotta do, I want you to be a one percenter. Anybody can do what the other 99% do. Okay, let's read a script, give a presentation and throw the kitchen sink at them and ask for the order five times. Do you think they know how to, do you think they know how to deal with you, most prospects? No. Yeah, I think they do. They've heard it all before. Oh, yes, if you act like the other people, of course. If you but say if the different. same words. Go ahead, Sean. No, what I, what I was just going to say was you were asking about takeaways. Um, we've all, you always harped on, the, you know, everybody talks about the first person to mention a number loses. What you have to keep in mind is, you know, because you, you're saying don't go back and forth. You have to come, I, I got to come up with a way of, of asking that same question a different way because like you said, whenever you do this, you have a number to see whether we'll get to that number. And, you know, thinking about throwing away all that money, if somebody's willing to go lower, um, it's just that's it's something really important to remember. And um, that one, that really tripped me up. I'm glad that that happened because um, it just, the, I thought the it was- The hardest thing about sales is we're playing to, in the inside, we're thinking, we're strategizing, we're psychoanalyzing, we're using psychology and all the things that we talk about and teach and what word should I use, what question should I ask, that's all going on in the inside. On the outside, I want you to be Uberman. I mean, you know, I want you to be Superman. I want you to be this confident, not a, not a bore, not a braggart, but I want you to be this assertive, confident person who speak, can speak uh, spontaneously, unscripted, you're so relaxed, you're so confident that this person says, wow, I've, I haven't met a guy like this before. This, this guy knocked my socks off. This guy is different. I he's hate done. him or I hate him because he's too confident and I'm not, or I like him because he's speaking his mind and he's, what's the lovely, what's the word they say? Transparent, authentic, epic, all those words. Yeah. I want you to play that role on the outside, even though inside maybe you're scared to death. I have to go, guys. Okay. All right. This was Thank fun. Good idea, Jimmy. Thanks for uh, suggesting it.
Yes, I think we should do it often. It's good. <laughs> are you, are you all, all you had to do was one thing. What was it? Ask. That's it. All you got to do is ask. See you later, guys. All right. All right. Bye-bye.